Hi everyone, it's Jennifer McGuire here. I know I don't normally go on the camera, that's because I'm extremely uncomfortable doing so, but I wanted to tell you something real quick. Over the next few months, I will have a few guest artist videos here on my YouTube channel and on my blog. Not that often, I've done a few in the past, but I have a few more to share with you. I've got some lined up, and I wanted to tell you the reason why. Um, I had asked once, I think it was on Facebook, if people enjoyed having guest artists on my channel and a lot of people liked it because it was a great way to discover some card makers that they hadn't known about before. I think it's extremely important in this industry to help each other out and to encourage other artists. So I like doing this. This is something I enjoy. So. I have found so many incredible card makers out there that have talent beyond what I could ever dream of having, and I like being able to share that with you guys. So this is just a way of encouraging other designers in the industry and also sharing with you some really incredible ideas. So I have a friend here today. This is my son, Colin. Say hi. Hi. He is 18. <laughs> How old are you? Nine. Nine. Okay. Anyways, he is here to introduce our guest artist for today. Do you remember what country she's from? Germany. Germany. And do you remember her name? Julia Alterman. Yes. She's extremely talented. Oh, thanks for that. Um, she's extremely talented and has the blog called JustOneMoreCard.com, which I will link to below. Um, her, I noticed her work on Instagram. I saw something that she did and I immediately emailed her and asked her if she could do a video to share with you guys. She takes a marker that's not very expensive and shows how you can blend it out and get great watercolor with it. Now, you don't have to have this particular type of markers. You can try whatever water-based markers you may already have. But her tips on how much water to use on your brush and kind of ways to go about um, watercoloring with your markers, I felt were very unique and very helpful. So I'm thinking that this will be really helpful for you too. Be sure to also check out Julia's blog, which I will link to here. Uh, she has a lot of wonderful cards and videos and her voice is fantastic too. Anyways, thanks Julia. Here she is. Hello, this is Julia from Just One More Card and I'm taking over Jennifer McGuire's YouTube channel today. Don't run away, I'm doing this with her permission and I promise you it's going to be fun. Jennifer invited me to show you how you can use these Stabilo pens for watercoloring. She saw this project that I shared on Instagram and I've also made a video for my YouTube channel showing how I watercolor these butterflies with these Stabilo pens. They, are, they might not be the most obvious medium to use, but they are water-based and what I like about them, they really have a great color intensity. You get really intense colors with these pens. This is the color chart I made for myself in this box. You don't really need all these colors, this is the biggest box they have, but I just, I just like having them all. But you can start out with some basic colors just like I did. For example, Here's the first card I did and I only used red, orange and yellow to color in this little crab and I didn't even use water here and that's why the colors are so super intense. And here's another card just using yellows and greens and I also didn't use water here, I simply let the colors shine. But no matter if you use water or not, you really want to use watercolor paper for this technique because that's where the, um, the pens will blend best. I like the Aquarelle Canson paper best because it's very sturdy, but you can use cheap watercolor paper or Tim Holtz watercolor paper. It will work just as fine. I'll be featuring the Unforgettable set by W plus 9 and the Sketched Alphabet by Simon Says Stamp. I'm using Archival Black Ink because this doesn't smudge when you use it with water. And I'm placing the O here on top of the stamper simply so I will know how far up I need to move my elephant so the O still has space. And here I'm using a simple post-it note to create a mask for my elephant because I want the elephant to hold on to the O. And when I peel off the mask, and I love this part, I'm really tickled pink because it looks like the elephant is holding on to the O here. And now I'm just stamping the balloon which will be holding on to the elephant and holding the little guy up. Here are the colors that I'm going to use. I already arranged them in rainbow order. And I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. And this is actually pretty easy. You might have already experimented with stuff like this with your distress markers. I'm putting down the darkest color first. and. Um, then I'm coming in with the lighter color and you cannot layer these as you do Copics. So I'm only tipping the lighter color to the edge of the darker color and then blending this out. 
The lighter color will momentarily be a little bit darker because you've picked up the darker ink, but then it will blend out and be really light. Then I'm grabbing my brush, which has some water in it, and I'm trying to blend out the color here. This is, you can't really see it, but it is really, it is really there. But if it's too faint for you, and this depends entirely on what you like, what your personal preference is, just scribble some color onto an acrylic block, pick it up with a brush loaded with water, and then you can intensify the colors. There's no right or wrong here. Whatever feels good for you, just experiment what you like. I'm repeating this process for all the letters, and I'm showing this um, again here for, for the L, putting down the darkest green first, and then I'm coming in with the lighter green, just touching it a bit to the darker one, and just blending it out. Then again, coming in with my water brush, going over the pigment there, picking it up and pushing it up. And again, if this is too light for you, just pick some off of an acrylic block, and then you can intensify the color. For the O, because it was tipped, I thought it would be kind of funny to think that the color was like a fluid inside, so it would be tipped as well. That's why I'm coloring this here at an angle. It was just a spontaneous idea that I had and I kind of liked it. And again, same technique, putting down the dark and then blending it out to the light and adding some water. On the balloon, I'm going to start with a dark color, which is my red, to create a shadow. And you can see I'm using a swirling motion here to put down the pigment and I'm making sure that I have a ragged edge to the color because I feel when I come in with the next lighter color, which is the orange, it's easier to create a blend if the edge is ragged. If you have a very straight edge, you might see that later on when you blend out. And having an uneven edge makes it easier to blend out the color. Now for filling in the rest of the balloon, you see that the most of it is white. I'm coming in with my brush, which has a lot of water in it, and I'm wetting the entire part where there is no color just yet. Because when I now go into the color, it will automatically seep into the wet area. I don't have to do anything basically because the water is doing all the work for me. I'm going over the entire balloon, activating the color and you can see blending it out. And now I'm cleaning off the brush because otherwise I couldn't blend this out to a very light shade. If I would not clean off the brush, I would have so much pigment that it would just be dark all over. It took me a while to figure out how to do this best. So if you try this, don't give up if it doesn't work immediately. It really is easy to do once you've got the hang of it. Now for my little elephant here, I scribbled down a lot of very light blue ink onto my acrylic block and I'm putting down a light coat of blue because I want him to appear gray, um, but I want the light areas, like not the shadows, but the light areas to be light blue because I think that just looks cuter than gray. I've dried this, uh, dried this with my heat gun and now I'm coming in with a dark gray color. And what I'm doing is I'm only putting down, because this pigment is really intense, I'm only putting down a hint of the color in the shadow areas. You can see not more than this is needed. And when I come in with the brush, I'm just blending it out a bit. And I can control the color very well because my brush is not wet, it's just damp. I feel that when I have a wet brush, at least I personally, I can control the flow of the water. Then I'm completely, you know, just mess. There's a mess if I use a wet brush. But here, if I use a damp brush, I can really control what I'm doing. At least I imagine that I can. So what I'm going, to, again, same thing, coming in, activating the color and then cleaning off the brush to make sure I can get rid of all the pigment that's on the brush, coming in with a clean damp brush and smoothing out the edge so it's not as stark. It's actually pretty easy, right? And I'm repeating the process um, on the rest of the elephant, simply touching a little bit of color to the paper where the darkest shadows would be, using the damp brush to activate the color and make sure I don't have a, um, a very strong edge, cleaning off the brush and then coming back in and blending this out. I'm going to repeat this for the rest of the elephant and play some music for you so you won't get bored by me talking and I'll meet you on the other side for some more details.
Now, once I was done with the elephant, I decided that my balloon was too orange. So I scribbled some yellow onto my acrylic block, diluted it with water, and then scribbling it, I'm scribbling it down onto the balloon. You can layer the colors. Just bear in mind that you can reactivate the dry layers if you use too much water. But if you use just a little bit of water and work quickly, you can add layers on top of dried layers and then intensify the colors or even um, make the colors appear a little bit different as I did here. Then I decided that the elephant needs to stand on something and so the letters also need to stand on something. And you will see this is super easy. I'm just putting down some color with my pen here, grabbing my water brush, which is loaded with water. I'm just tipping, uh, like touching the top of the brush to the brown ink and then pulling it downwards as far as the water in the brush lasts. And you can see how the color immediately reacts with the water and you can create this beautiful, beautiful, basically ground on which the letters sit. Then I used quite a lot of glossy accents on the balloon and while I was doing this, I had the idea of doing this on the letters as well. I'm sorry my camera shut off, but I basically repeated the same procedure on all the letters. And then I decided, hmm, the balloon needs some sky. So what I'm doing is I'm simply grabbing my light blue or the second lightest blue, putting down some color and then coming in with a brush that is loaded with water. And that allows me to dilute this, the ink here, the pigment on the watercolor cardstock and I won't have any streaks, but I will have a super, super, super soft blend of blue around the balloon mimicking the sky. You can see how intense it was at first and now I have this super soft blend of blue. Now the camera went off again, I'm so sorry for that, but basically I just grabbed the star stamp that comes with the stamp set, a few pigment inks in rainbow colors and stamped the stars, sprinkled them around the letters and then dipped some gold embossing powder onto the wet glossy accent to make the balloon sparkle. And here's a close up of our little elephant with his pink ears on the card. And that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this card. This was Julia Alterman for Jennifer McGuire Inc. I'm, I'm so happy that I got to sh uh, the chance to share this with you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Jennifer, for having me. And yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer all your questions. Cheers! Thank you so much, Julia. If you are interested in the products that Julia used today, you can check the YouTube description below and also have a link for her blog and YouTube channel. I appreciate you watching. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. We'll see you again soon. She actually lives in Germany, I believe. Hi, Roxy. Hi, Roxy. So I have a friend here who wants to introduce our guest artist for today. Do you remember her name? No. Do you remember what country she's from?